pastor, so we are here together for the duration. Uh, I have moved in. Uh, come by, say hi to me in the office. You'll see two kennels. My Jack Russells will be with me during the day until I figure out some kind of dog walking system. So we will be having some party time back there with Nancy. So, so excited that you're here to worship with us, whether you're in this space or online. Uh, we welcome you to God's house. We are going to try, for the next couple months, all kinds of new and different things. And some things will work, and some things won't. And when they don't work, I'm assuming we're going to hear from them. So uh, let us know. If things are working, you can let the transition team know how great they are. If, uh, if they're not working... <laughs> If they're not working, I would prefer you come and chit chat with me. Um, don't chit chat with your neighbor. Let me know how you feel. See, God gets up at 8:30 in the morning. Very good. A couple quick announcements. Uh, we got some good things coming up on your little green sheet. We've got the Rule of Christ training, and you say, "What in heaven's name is that?" Well, we have gone through some transitions, and we're going to talk about those. And sometimes transitions are easy. And sometimes they're hard, so uh, we just have to watch our P's and Q's and our behavior as we go through transitions. So this is kind of a good training on not only on how do we act like good human beings in this worship space, but how do we act like good human beings in our homes, at work, and in the areas that we play. So I uh, highly recommend that you take a peek at this. I think your part is only an hour, uh, so you'll get some good stuff. And then on the back, Grace Camp is coming up, and you can take a peek at that also. So I think that's my welcome and announcements. Anything else we need to be chit-chatting about at this moment? Okay, great. So it's going to be a little awkward, because I'm going to be running back and forth between here and the choir. But you're just going to have to entertain yourselves for a moment while I get over there. So welcome to worship.
children's message? Or any people that are young at heart? Oh my gosh, look at all these kiddos. You know what, I don't like <laughs> At least not the first Sunday. That's great all to do. All right, so how's everybody doing today? Anybody have a hard time getting up this early on a Sunday morning? <laughs> Man, me too, I hear you, so thanks for being here. So today we're going to talk about beginnings and endings. Did you know you can't have a beginning without an ending? And you can't have an ending without a beginning, did you know that? So here's like an example. You know how you guys just finished school? Everybody all done? Alright, so that was an ending. And now we get to begin summer. What's everybody going to do this summer? Camping. Camping. Uh, stay and hang out. Go to the lake. Go to the lake. I love that. Anything else? Camping. I'm going to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be a new beginning. So we're going to have a beginning. And then what's going to happen at the end of summer? School. And so we're going to end summer and then we're going to begin school. So. Lots of beginning, lots of endings. We don't have to be afraid of them. They're just change. You know what? And we do pretty well with change, don't we? Yeah. That's great. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for these kiddos. We thank you for our time together. We thank you for beginning and endings. And we ask that you would take away all the worry and concern that we have when something ends and something begins. Because the whole Bible is all about beginning and endings. So we ask that you would be with us this morning and let us have fun. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can head back. So I know you guys are used to doing prayer a little bit different, so we're going to try something this morning. I'm going to invite my dearest, uh, my favorite cousin, because he's my only cousin here, uh, Steve, to come up and lead us in an intercessory prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Something a little different is I'm going to read a statement that we pray on, then I'm going to say, Lord, in your mercy, and please respond with, hear our prayers. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, please help bring peace to a crazy world. We have conflicts across the globe. There are many innocent victims. Please bring peace to these areas the conflict in Ukraine, and many others. Please bring peace to those that contemplate violence to others of any kind. Please reach out to these people. Bring them peace. Bring them your understanding. Lord, in your mercy, bring wisdom and discernment to our leaders. Help them to find common ground to serve, using your principles as their guide. Lord, in your mercy, Help us to better understand your teachings and apply them in our daily lives. Help us to find common ground with those that we disagree. Also, help us to be disciples to those that don't know you yet. There are many folks that are unchurched and don't know you yet. Please let us know when an opportunity arises to help that person find the rock. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, help us to use all the resources you have provided in a responsible way to improve the lives of people across the globe. Lord, in your mercy, please shower your grace on those that are on the bookmark. Bring them peace and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, at this time, if you have personal prayer concerns or want to lift anybody up in particular, either silently or aloud, please take time for personal prayer. Lord, in your 
mercy. And now let's recite the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, I don't know what John Belushi movie it was, but it was one of them. And do you remember when John Belushi yells out, and the band is back? Well, the choir is back. Now. Now, just so I don't have to remind you, when the choir is done, it would be appropriate if you would all stand up and give them a standing ovation. <laughs>
life's scary. I can't even find a job. I'll just never get over the abuse. I'll always be married. I know you can never forgive me. at Bugby Lodge this morning. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> All right. So who would have known 164 years ago that folks would have settled into Painesville and possessed the strength and character and wisdom and vision to start churches? They started out with evangelical churches and Methodist churches, and pretty soon they all joined together, and here we are at Grace Church, right now, right here, right today. And during their, our existence, this church grew, and it got remodeled, and we continued to worship Christ. And we're going to continue to do some remodeling and make some changes, hopefully all for the glory of God. And you know what? Many pastors have come and gone. Pastor Bob has gone to California. I'm here with you today. God help you. Uh, transition, it happens all the time. It happened all the time in the Bible. Some for better, some for worse. You know, we'll never know until we live through them. But transitions happen all the time. So let's take a minute and hear what Jesus has to say through supposedly the Apostle uh, John in Revelation. So Terry, would you be kind enough to come up and read a little bit of our scripture today? Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture lesson comes from Revelation 21, verses 5 through 7. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This ends today's reading. So you see, you've lived out your call to ministry. 
by engaging your neighbors, by providing financial strength, physical, tutoring help at the U-Zone. And by the way, we're gonna get the U-Zone fired back up. That's our goal for this summer. So if you know anyone who would like to uh, help me lead that ministry, please let me know. You've conducted prayer ministries. You've had prayer partners. You pray for your emergency responders. You provide meals and treats for people. You selected monthly missions to support. You stocked area food shelves. You've given money to Sierra Leone. You provided funds and volunteered hours at Coronas Ministries. And right here at Grace, you've got an active prayer life, a prayer shawl group. And now you have the band, they're back. <laughs> so all this kingdom work is being done since the beginning of Grace, and it continues. So now we find ourselves at an end an end to the work under Pastor Bob's leadership and starting a new beginning under my leadership. A pastor whose grandparents attended this church, whose parents attended this church, whose funeral services were held right here and right here where I heard my call to ministry under Pastor Rick Kane back in November of 2011. And now we have the opportunity to work together to figure out what we want to do next to figure out what ministries and missions it's time to put a period on and so that we can bring new ministries and new missions onto our plate. And we don't know what they're going to be yet, but we'll figure them out as we go along because perhaps there is more kingdom work for this church to do. You know, and in the few verses preceding scripture today, we read, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first one had passed away, and now we're in a new one. So beginning and endings. And our scripture reading tells us that God is seated at the throne and will make everything new. He even wanted the author of Revelation, the Apostle Paul, to write down that information. Why? Because it was important. It was good stuff. It was trustworthy. And it was true. The Bible begins with this majestic story of creation. And it goes all the way through these storylines until it comes to the end. And the best news is that if we're believers in Jesus, we get to have a great new beginning in heaven. And the author goes on to say, and those who overcome all this rough stuff here will inherit the kingdom of God. Those who endure all the crazy beginnings and the endings you know what? We're going to get to the end, and it's going to be pretty great. But like we talked about with the kiddos, all this is to say that we don't go through lots of emotional stuff during beginning and ending. Sometimes they're hard, and they're all part of the cycle of life, but God has given us tools to get through these times of transition. Number one, is you need to get in community. You need to be hearing each other's stories, listening to their happy parts and their painful parts, and being with people as we go through this change. Second of all, we need to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is the dude that's going to help us get through all this crazy stuff, and he's always with us. We just got to ask for his help. And thirdly, we got to acknowledge. We got to acknowledge that we're sinful human beings and we got to learn to say, "You know what? I blew it. I'm sorry." We got to repent. You know, Jesus took all of our sins to the cross. He's the dude that went through the horrible pain, the little the little pain that we're going to go through and saying, "Hey, I'm sorry. I won't do it again." is not a big deal. So we need to prepare our hearts for those moments when we're going to have to have some rough conversations. You're going to have them. I'm going to have them. We're going to have them together. And lastly, number four, we need to seek to live in peace together. We heard Steve during the intercessory prayer. You know, I can't imagine what it's like. I can't even imagine for a Ukrainian woman to have to take her children to the border hand them off to some person she doesn't even know, take off those clothes, put on her military clothes, take her crazy bazooka thing or whatever that thing is, and go up and blow up tanks. I mean, that's her job. And so if she can do that, 
We can certainly live in peace here, pray together, and be nice to each other. It's not that tough. So those are the four things. Learn each other's stories, accept Jesus, repent of our sins, and work to live in peace together. So as we begin our time together, let's always remind ourselves and each other about those four steps. And during the next couple of weeks, if you choose to come back, which I hope you do, we're going to talk about some of the emotions that we go through during transition. You know, we wonder, what's my role going to be? How's it going to work? We worry, what's my new role and how's it going to work? We get fearful and we get excited and we say, oh my gosh, there she goes again. We tried that a hundred years ago and it didn't work. Why does she think it's going to work now? And we're going to say, you know what, I've heard it all before. It isn't going to change. You're not going to change me. I don't like change. But we'll get through it. After all, you haven't experienced life under Ben Helling's daughter. She's kind of a crazy girl. <laughs> she likes to go off road because that's where Jesus takes her sometimes. So I'm just going to tell you to hold on to your hat. We're going to have some fun. So today, we may not know our exact pathway or the exact route, but we do know where we're going, and that's to get through this crazy transition, move through it, and start our mission work, because that's what God called us to do. And that's, my friends, what the Holy Spirit has called us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, now, I've already screwed up the order, and that's why poor David didn't start the video right away, because he was waiting for the offering. <laughs> so, would my offering folks please come forward? And like I used to say at Hillcrest in Bloomington, please feel free to add a couple zeros to your offering. <laughs> there you go. so that we can be your hands and feet and your voice out in a broken world. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, this worked out okay, because now that I've already got you standing, you can stay standing for our two closing songs. <laughs>
I guess that we're not having hot air balloon rides and pony rides because it's my first Sunday. I guess we're going to have to wait till July. So please do come back. We are so excited that you're here. Again, we're going to try things that work. We're going to try things that don't work. If you don't like it, come to me. If you do like it, go to your transition team. So with that, we would like to offer up this blessing. May God shine his face upon you. And may he bless you. And may you know and remember every single day that you are the hands and feet of Jesus. So that means you got to move them. So get moving and spread the good word, because it is a good word. Amen. Come back and join us for coffee and treats. Amen.